This question is a work of an art, and the solution will blow away your mind. We have a semicircle whose diameter is 10 units. Now we draw this line from this corner of the semicircle, which is making an angle of 30 degrees like this. Then we draw a small circle, such that both the diameter of this semicircle and this line are tangents to this circle, and also this circle just touches this semicircle internally at this point. Our job is to find the radius of this circle. So, can you solve it? Okay, let me tell you that this problem uses multiple theorems that you might have never ever heard of, and I will walk you through each of them step by step as we proceed through the problem. The very first theorem that we will use is called the theorem of tangent and radius. The tangent is a straight line that touches the circle at exactly one point without crossing it. The important property of a tangent is that it is always perpendicular to the radius at the point where it touches the circle. So, if we draw this radius to this tangent line, or the diameter of this semicircle, then this angle will be 90 degrees. Similarly, if we draw this radius to this line, then this angle will also be 90 degrees. Let us label the radius of this circle as R. Now we will look at another theorem called Two Tangents Theorem. If two tangents are drawn to a circle from a single external point, then these tangents will always be equal in length. Another important property of this theorem is that the line joining the external point to the center of the circle always bisects the angle formed between the two tangents. So, if this angle is 40 degrees, then both these angles will be equal to 20 degrees, and if this length is equal to 5 units, then this piece will also be equal to 5 units. So, for our case, if we draw a line from this corner of the semicircle to the center of this circle, then it will bisect this angle, and both these angles will be equal to 15 degrees. Noise! Now, what to do? Here comes the real magic. Let me tell you one more interesting fact about circles. Suppose we have two circles that are touching each other at one point internally. Then the diameter of this smaller circle drawn from this point of intersection will pass through the center of this bigger circle. So in our case, assume this is the center of this semicircle. So the length of this piece will be the same as the radius of this semicircle, isn't it? Thus, it will be equal to 5. Now let us label the length of this piece, which is from the center of this semicircle to this point of tangency, as x. Now, if we draw the diameter of this smaller circle from this point of intersection, then it will pass through the center of this semicircle. Consider this semicircle and this line. This is the same as the radius of this semicircle, which is 5, and this is the radius of this smaller circle, which is r. Thus, the length of this piece will be equal to 5 minus r, right? Now, consider this right triangle. Using Pythagoras' theorem, we get 5 minus r, whole squared equals r squared plus x squared. Using a minus b, whole square formula, expand this to get 25 plus r squared minus 10 r equals r squared plus x squared. Oh look, both these r squares will get cancelled out, and we will be left with x squared equals 25 minus 10 r. Let us keep this equation aside for some time. Now look at this right triangle. We will be using trigonometry. We have 15 degrees here, and thus we get tan of 15 degrees equals opposite side, or r, over adjacent side, or this, which is 5 plus x. Now we will calculate the value of tan 15 degrees using the tan A minus B formula, which is equal to tan A minus tan B over 1 plus tan A times tan B. Using the trigonometry table for standard values of angles, we know that tan of 45 degrees equals 1, and tan of 30 degrees equals 1 over the square root of 3. So, we will take A as 45 and B as 30 to get tan of 45 minus 30, or tan 15 degrees equals tan 45 minus tan 30 over 1 plus tan 45 times tan 30. Substitute the values of tan 45 
and tan 30 to get tan 15, as 1 minus 1 over root 3 divided by 1 plus 1 time 1 over the square root of 3. Next, multiply and divide by root 3 in both numerator and denominator. Numerator becomes root 3 minus 1, and denominator becomes root 3 plus 1. Now, we will rationalize this expression. To do that, we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, which is root 3 minus 1. So now the numerator becomes root 3 minus 1 times root 3 minus 1. Multiply this out. Root 3 times root 3 gives 3. Then root 3 times minus 1 gives minus root 3. Again, minus 1 times root 3 gives minus root 3. And finally, minus 1 times minus 1 gives plus 1. So when we add it all up, the numerator becomes 4 minus 2 times root 3. Now let's simplify the denominator. Root 3 plus 1 times root 3 minus 1 gives root 3 times root 3, which is 3, and then minus 1 times 1, which is 1. So the denominator becomes 3 minus 1, which is 2. So finally, tan 15 becomes 4 minus 2 times root 3 over 2, which is equal to 2 minus root 3. Phew, that was tiring. Now substitute it here to get 2 minus root 3 equals r over 5 plus x. Now take 5 plus x here and 2 minus root 3 here to get 5 plus x equals r over 2 minus root 3. Now we need to rationalize the right side. So we multiply both numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, which is 2 plus the square root of 3. So the numerator becomes r times 2 plus root 3, and the denominator becomes 2 minus root 3 times 2 plus root 3. That gives 2 squared minus root 3 squared, which is 4 minus 3, so the denominator becomes 1. Thus, this equals 2 plus root 3 r. Now take 5 to the other side, so we get x equals 2 r plus r times root 3 minus 5. This is becoming intense. Can you feel the heat? Finally, substitute this value of x here to get this square equals 25 minus 10 r. Now we can use a minus b whole square formula to expand this. Consider a equals 2 r plus r times root 3 and b equals 5. So after expansion, we get this as this square minus 10 times this plus 5 square or 25 equals 25 minus 10 r. Whoa! Both these 25 will be canceled, and we will be left with this. Now, using a plus b whole square formula, expand this to get 4r square plus 4r square times root 3 plus 3r square. Then this will be minus 20r minus 10r root 3, and this equals minus 10r. Now, take this and this on right side to get this as 20r plus 10 r root 3 minus 10 r, or 10 r plus 10 r root 3. This side will become 7 r square plus 4 r square root 3. Take r square, as common from here, to get r square, times 7 plus 4 root 3 equals take r, as common from here, to get r times 10 plus 10 root 3. Wow, cancel out the r, and take this here to get r equals 10 plus 10 root 3 over 7 plus 4 root 3. Now we will rationalize this term to make r look dashing. So we multiply both numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, which is 7 minus 4 root 3. Now let's expand the numerator first. 10 times 7 gives 70, and 10 times minus 4 root 3 gives minus 40 root 3. Then 10 root 3 times 7 gives 70 root 3, and 10 root 3 times minus 4 root 3 gives minus 40 times 3, which is minus 120. Now add up all these terms. 70 minus 120 gives minus 50, and minus 40 root 3 plus 70 root 3 gives 30 root 3. So the numerator becomes 30 root 3 minus 50. Now let's simplify the denominator. 
7 plus 4 root 3 times 7 minus 4. Root 3 gives 7 squared minus 4 root 3 squared. That's 49 minus 16 times 3, which is 49 minus 48, and that gives 1. So r equals 30 root 3 minus 50, which is roughly 1.96 units, and we are finally done. It takes a lot of effort to make such videos, and thus you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.